Hi everyone, my name is Tara Lynn. Welcome to my channel. I am the author of Claim Your Crown, the founder of Adorn and Armor, and a lot of other stuff. But most recently, I got a new title under my belt. And that title is Fashion Editor at Cosmopolitan. You guys, it is crazy. Like, so crazy. Like, even now, like, it's not crazy to imagine. It's just crazy that God is so good. I'm giving you a brief timeline of my entrepreneurship journey, um, becoming an author. Oh, and even before all that, being a fashion blogger, fashion and faith blogger, and how it I don't know, this line just landed me here. Truly, this video is going to be a testament as to how like God's timing is impeccable. And you guys will see by just hearing like my background, honestly, what led me back into the fashion industry after writing my books and how I knew it was time. So yeah, come along you guys. I am so excited to share this with you. It's been long awaited. I know I got a lot of questions about it um, and it's here. Let's start with some background, shall we? If you guys know me and my story, I used to be a really shy kid. I found a love for fashion. My parents are amazing dressers and so they taught my siblings and I how important it was to best, oh, my dad's in the kitchen, how to best present ourselves through how we carry ourselves, through what we wear, um, and honestly how we look like, how we carry ourselves. I said that. You get what I'm coming from. At a very early age, I learned that my style could speak for me. And that is something that I've always, always said because it was a revelation, honestly, that changed the game for me. Compliments would turn into conversations and honestly, bit by bit, I would be opening up. So let's fast forward to college, right? I didn't go to school for fashion. I have Haitian parents. <laughs> and though they are super, super supportive, um, the fashion dream wasn't, they weren't all here for that, okay? They wanted something stable and I totally understood that because, okay, I guess I should start by saying when I was younger, I wanted to be a fashion designer. And honestly, like growing up, um, I realized that, well, one of my main gifts, like, okay, yeah, it's fashion, but it's writing. Um, so I used to do a lot of poetry stuff. I won a lot of competitions for it. And then I started writing like mini stories and it was just obvious that writing was one of my gifts. So my parents always encouraged me to go in that direction. So when it was time for me to go to school, um, I really wanted to go to a school that had fashion, but the one I chose didn't and it was funny too. I wasn't like, I didn't argue with my parents about the fashion design thing because one you guys, I know how to sew. So it was like, you know what, it's whatever. I'll go to school for media. My parents, well my dad particularly always saw me as just like a news personality and um yeah i just went for communications and plus like i always loved magazines i had stacks in my home and literally it didn't make any sense so yeah i wanted to do the fashion design thing and then it turned into the fashion editor thing and so yeah i went into media so i majored in communication studies and what was so cool um was that though there was nothing fashion related at my school so i went to writer university here in new jersey um the media department was so cool like i loved my dean we were like super close and i was able to turn my degree into something fashion related so like in a way like fashion was my beat of course i have i would have different assignments but it was clear that of course i wanted to write about stuff that had to do with style um i studied in washington for a semester we had amazing shadow opportunities in dc with buzzfeed and nbc and whatever i don't remember all these other things but i remember going to the washington post and you know when you think of DC, you don't typically think of fashion. You think of like politics and stuff like that, right? So we visited the Washington Post that day. And I remember that day so clearly because I was, I was in a like, uh, I was in a pickle, okay? I knew I wanted to go into the fashion industry, right? Um, to go into the fashion editor route. However, I was just like, how serious is this industry? So many people would consider that 
something like fashion is like fluff you know what I mean and I'm just like I want to be writing and reporting on something that's substantial that means something so how can I do that and I remember going to the Washington Post and there was a marked moment for me um, because at the time I was just like oh my gosh one of the things I want to do is be like an on-air red carpet host I referred to a specific uh, brand that I wanted to do that with and they told me every beat matters as long as it is true and that changed the game for me it just goes to show that there is weight in what we care about and honestly there's a reason as to why we are drawn to certain things so long as we pursue these things in the light of truth so yeah that honestly gave me like the push to go even harder with the fashion thing that summer i landed an internship with l.com but I am going to rewind some, okay? Because I realized I didn't tell you of one of the like most pivotal moments of my life. And that was in 2013. I was a freshman and I had just received an assignment to create a blog. And I knew, well one, I love fashion, I love to write, and <laughs> oh my gosh, no sidebar you guys, I was just interviewing with um, a reporter from my old school, Writer University, and they asked me a question like about, they asked me what I would wear to class and I was just like heels, you know, and lots of color. I love color, as you can see. Um, and I also shared that I didn't own a pair of sweats until like my senior year of college. Like my parents did not believe in that, particularly my mom. She was just not having it. And we were like cracking up in the interview. Okay, okay, okay. But that's a sidebar, okay? So 2013, right? I received the assignment to start a blog. I knew I loved to write, I knew I loved fashion, and I knew I was passionate about what I stood for. I knew that my assignment was going to be a fashion and faith blog. I'd never seen it done before. I just knew that's what I was drawn to and so that's what I was going to do. So I did it. <laughs> At the time, I didn't have a name for it. And you know when it just feels right? Um, at the time, it was my old email account. I'm not even going to share um, the name of that, but there's these marked moments in our lives that you honestly never forget. And 2013 was that for me, and I know I keep saying the date, and it's not even just because of the blog, but it was because in 2013, that was when my mom had a stroke, and it was completely unrelated to whatever else that she has. Um, my mom has been sick for majority of my life. It's now 22 years, 21. Basically, she she's had seven plus surgeries um, and they were all unsuccessful. And so she lives in chronic pain. And I keep saying and, but um, yeah, she's in chronic pain all the time and she cannot walk. So yeah, I mean, life was already hard because of that, especially because you know she was a nurse and then all of a sudden this ha that happened like it's not like she got in a car accident or anything she woke up and she just felt the pain and yeah um doctors uh, let her know that she had a vascular necrosis which is when like your femur bones are rotting so yeah so that's that right she had a stroke and it was something completely unrelated and it was rough it was so rough because I didn't know how much it burdened me, like that it, it hurt me that my mom was sick and always in pain. Um, and I remember um, it was just very difficult. I'm not even going to turn it into that story because then this video will be super, super long. But basically my siblings and I were the ones that, and my dad, the ones that discovered my mom in the hospital, um, she woke up and she couldn't remember our names. And so, yeah, and it was, you know what, let's, let's move on. Um, spring break had ended, so I got back to my dorm and I just remember just being upset with God. And I'm just like, honestly, yet another thing, like what's going on, like what's up? And I remember hearing a message about putting on your full armor and that changed the game for me because I don't know if I heard about it at the time, Ephesians 6. Um, 
yeah I don't know but I feel like I did but I feel like no I know in that moment I received the title of my blog and my brand which is called adorned in armor and encourages women to conquer life through fashion and faith um, and if you read um, that passage it's all about dressing up for the battlefield of life and I just thought it was so funny because I was like god you're so cute like this works perfectly like I love to adorn myself and I love to encourage others um, of how to adorn themselves you know physically and fabulously right I'm also showing how to do so spiritually mentally emotionally you know how to adorn our hearts our lifestyles and um, it was something that and it's still something that is very dear to me and um yeah so that's how adorned and armor was born within a year my readers voted me as the best international fashion blog at the cosmopolitan uk blog awards and that was such a blessing in so many ways but particularly because it showed my parents how honestly god could do anything and he can work in any industry it doesn't matter whether it's like worldly or churchy or not do you know what i mean if you are graced for a certain space that is your space that is where you belong and that's where you will rule that's where you're gonna conquer and that showed my parents very early on and for me honestly as well just like whoa a world of possibilities you know my school flew me out and everything i was able to go to the awards and it was great i met other bloggers there had a great time in london and the cosmo uk team was so cool it was just a great time you know and to just come back and be able to share that with my family was yeah that touches me the most honestly it's these moments with my loved ones and to be able to like celebrate and revel in all that's been going on all the blessings it's yeah, it's heartwarming, honestly. Adorned in Armor was where and is where I shared how to fashionably fight battles with faith. It's been my home for sharing my style and my struggles because, you know, I'm open with sharing my experiences about life, <laughs> the hurts that I go through, um, and just like life at home with my mom. It was my goal and it still is my goal to show the world honestly how loving fashion isn't vain and dreaming big is something that we're supposed to do our passions are there for a reason and we can flourish in our assignments no matter where we are so sidebar and i know i'm gonna go back to the story but think about it i want you guys to remember that cosmo uk one year after starting my blog that i was voted best international fashion blogger you guys what am i now where am I now? The fashion editor at Cosmopolitan in the US. Like, that's seven years later, you guys. Anyway, let me continue on. I shared that I interned at L.com and honestly, I'm grateful for that internship because it showed me the reality of things of how like being the fashion editor, like, you know, or especially the intern is not as glamorous as it seems. I mean, it's not like a uh, Devil Wears Prada, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but it's definitely, um, you really have to find your place. You have to find your home, you have to find your people. And um, honestly, if you don't love fashion enough, it will definitely tear at your soul. <laughs> But clearly, I'm still here. Oh, not to say that my experience was bad there. I, I liked my internship. I'm just saying it opened my eyes being in that space for the first time. Let's fast forward to graduation. <laughs> okay, so I graduated the top of my class, summa cum laude, okay, with so many honors and... I did all the internships, right? I mentioned to you, like I did shadow opportunities. I was in DC, I had the Canucks. Like I was doing fashion week through my own blog. Like, you know, I did the fashion internships, you know? And I graduated and honestly, everybody thought I was set. My parents, my friends, like the school, like everyone, I thought I was set. You know what I mean? And I graduated and you guys, I had no job. Mm. I had no job and it was sickening because as you can see I'm a very ambitious I'm a go-getter I go after what I want and I'm a very career driven woman okay <laughs> and so being at home was 
killing me inside in so many ways but there was also like a blessing in it as well number one I was able to better care for my mom I got a job at Aldo so I was working retail and honestly it chipped away at my heart sometimes the team was amazing I loved it and the discount was it was a one okay uh, but it was like wow I can't believe like I'm here like I didn't I just didn't see that for myself it helped me in um, pursuing my dreams as I was working on my brand online and doing the events thing and here and there I would have speaking engagements as well not just like through fashion stuff but like through faith stuff as well where I would just go to different schools or um, churches and do um, workshops or conferences um, encouraging women to know their worth I literally interviewed Pulitzer Prize winning fashion critics in DC I did so much and I had no job it was real it was real and my parents were I feel like the most confused <laughs> I talk about this a little in my book because it really has to do with timing I remember my father telling me like why don't you just get any job and you work your way up like, I didn't feel like that's what I was supposed to do in that moment I felt like I should be home I should be working retail I should be working on my brand and finding other opportunities online I really wanted to work at Teen Vogue and honestly let's just I'm not even gonna go into that one you guys uh I have a video sharing how i became like the fashion writer at like a fashion contributor at teen vogue and i never shared it it was years ago like i think i made it in 2018 like i and i think i have the content here somewhere um let me know if you guys would still like to see it if i find it um yeah because no this is crazy the fact that i never ever posted it but i did record it and it was fun to make too i don't know what happened there but yeah I'm not gonna go into the story as to how I landed that um, position but it was it was crazy as well and it was so awesome being there because that's how I was able to go to Haiti for the first time without my family so I went there as it was a baby well I was not baby but I was really young but in 2018 I think it was or 2019 um, I was able to go on a press trip to Haiti and um, I visited the most beautiful places there and honestly if I was working somewhere else I wouldn't have had the opportunities to do that while I was home I felt like I was really allowed to explore the avenues of all the different things I was interested in so I knew I loved doing my blog thing so I was able to pursue that you know um, and thank God honestly that I didn't feel the pressure like I didn't have that pressure to uh, find a way to make income um, I mean I was making something but it wasn't substantial you know and I was just so grateful and so grateful that um, I was just living with my parents and they just trusted in my vision you know they weren't pushing me or anything of course I helped in what I could um, but um, yeah they were patient and <laughs> I learned to be patient too okay my camera stopped all right so you guys knew um so pageantry was one of the things that i was interested in um and of course school was as well i went back to school and i got my master's within one and a half years um at syracuse university i studied journalism innovation and that was amazing i love that experience so much um primarily because it was like sometimes it could feel like oh you're just doing things and you know you're just led in certain directions just because but I don't know like I feel like there's different moments in my life where I always just look back and I realize that I was being led all along it wasn't just that oh I just thought oh why not let me do this you know I say this because different things were born at those places like for example um, I mentioned with um, the pageant thing I was able to go to Haiti and showcase the most beautiful places there I brought my crown to Haiti and I visited a classroom and I was so amazed at how they were enthralled with the crown like the kids and I was just so I was just like oh my gosh like what if we all knew that we already had this I came up with the idea to write a book like you guys know part of this story I've always known I was going to be an author but I thought that would happen like in my 30s and stuff but I got a triple book deal at age 23 and <laughs> 
That's how Claim Your Crown was born. Nothing in our lives happens by accident. Everything is intentional. It's just up to us to sit there and look and to be really responsible, um, good stewards as to where we are in the moments, in these moments, especially when they're moments like, we don't wanna be in these places, you know what I mean? I didn't wanna be at home, but I made the best out of my situation. It's just really important that we sit down and really assess, okay, what am I doing here? What am I called to do right now in this moment, in this space? Who am I called to in this moment? And um, yeah, <laughs> I mentioned that, okay? And like for grad school, my podcast was born through that. Like, do you get what I'm saying? your interests like your god-given passions your interests they're there for a reason and they lead to a greater purpose and that is to serve other people while i was in grad school i was able to work with the fashion transparency index and to literally honor garment worker rights and i just learned so much it was it was so cool guys so so cool um so i did all that um, after I returned from Haiti, it was like a week trip, like a week long trip. Like I met like the most amazing people. And one of the people that I met was um, the editor in, well, she's now the editor in chief, hey girl, um, of the Haitian Times. And when I got back, I became their style editor. So I was working for um, Teen Vogue and the Haitian Times at that time. Then I got the book deal and honestly, I don't even know how to explain it but it was like I knew in my heart that it was time to let both of those things go and focus on what I was given focus on my own vision my own brand and so that's what I was doing working on Adorn and Armor but also Claim Your Crown that was released in 2020 um, and then Love Letters from the King came out in 2021 last year and my third book is being released next spring so I'm super excited about that and to share details and stuff but that's not why we're here right so in the beginning of this year I was really conscious as to how much I really missed working in fashion. I missed it in 2020, I missed it in 2021, but in those times, I knew it was not time. So I did not pursue it at all. And it was so funny because my sister, Magina, she now works at the building that I was working at while well, interning at, at L. So um, yeah, now she's at Hearst and she's doing amazing work at House Beautiful as an editor there as well. And um, it was so funny because she would see job listings and she's just like, hmm, it'd be cool if Tara could come here, like, you know, um, but she didn't even like really share that part with me. Um, but like here and there, like my parents, like, well, particularly my mom would like nudge at like, oh, like, why don't you just like take a look, you know, but I just knew it was not time. But the beginning of this year, it was, I realized that it was. I did a lot of reflecting. <laughs> A lot after a rocky and super shaky 2020 and 2021 i was like i need some stability in my life and i decided to go on hearst on the hearst website and i saw a listing for cosmopolitan i looked at it and i was just like hmm. once i saw that job listing i knew it was mine like no lie i i looked at it and i knew i hesitated to even go for it and that's because I've been so accustomed to being my own boss for so long. Oh, one aspect that I forgot to mention was that, you know, it was good that I was home because it's like, Tara, you're not even a morning person. You're gonna wake up and go to a nine to five? Like, girl, bye. Like, you know, that's not for you. It was so funny because I was like, oh God, you're so sweet that you're allowing me to sleep in, especially like I was a night owl. Life has changed since then. I mean, I still kind of am but it's not as bad you know um especially now that i have this job i can't be doing that these thoughts like were coming to me of just like oh wait mm, maybe there's like a part-time job i could do here you know what i mean or maybe i could like freelance um i didn't want to fully commit it's been cool to be my own boss to have my own hours and to just like live my own life on my own terms another aspect of this was like oh my gosh like at the beginning of the year there were so many articles about how um people who what do you call those office people who are working in the like the labor force like the office and stuff like that everybody was like not everybody but so many people were coming out to be like creatives and starting their own uh jobs and businesses like in their homes and here i am 
have already like I already did that and now I'm entering in it because I'm just like I want to but what was my real push was when I had a conversation with my dad and my dad <laughs> I told you guys my parents are super supportive my whole family is I was having a conversation with him and we were just talking about life and he was just like so what are your plans like um, for work this year and I was just like oh like um, I'm trying to see like I'm trying to figure that out actually like right now mind you I had already seen that job listing I didn't share it with him um, and then he was just like why don't you just go for a job that you want like why don't you just like do it and um, I was just like oh like and then like he, he continued talking and he was just like the books have been such a blessing like such an amazing thing for you it was such a surprise and uh, I'm so grateful for it, but it did take you away from your dream of ultimately being a fashion editor. And I was just like, wow, I never thought about it that way. Never. I knew what he was communicating as well. Um, this book journey is something I would never, ever take back. Like the people that I have um, talked to or even just ministered to um, through these books, like I carry it so oh my gosh like it means so much to me because this is like whenever i finish anything but particularly a book i just look at it and i'm just like wow you did that you did that and that conversation with my dad made me realize that was done and i'm not saying like there's not going to be more books because there will be but I'm just saying that I just knew it was my season to really step into this fashion editor role. So again, I saw that listing. I knew it was mine. I went for it. <laughs> my sister recommended me for the position, um, though she was at a different publication. And literally that same day after having a conversation with my dad, I made my resume. You guys, I hadn't touched that since 2018. I had to do so many things. And... I enjoyed that process as well because I love creating things but it also reminded of how many things that I have done in the industry on my own and I was just like wow I'm really true to this and it just reminded me even more that this was for me that this was my calling okay you guys I have to speak faster because my camera's about to die I need a new battery um so yeah all right so I submitted and um I submitted the application and within that day or maybe the next day I heard back and yeah basically set up um, an interview with the director the fashion director met her she was amazing I loved her and off the bat like I knew it was mine because you guys let me tell you first of all the time that she told me that we're um, to come in it just works so perfectly with my sleep schedule so we're not coming in like at 9 a.m. or anything you know so that made me super excited so I was like oh thank god like further confirmation like this is for me in the interview uh, the director um, she also mentioned something about um, what makes me sparkle and it was so sweet because um, just a couple months prior I was having like a pageant training session and um, my coach at the time was talking to me about the sparkle effect that was super sweet as well like just extra confirmations of how like you know this was for me another thing was the timing you guys I feel like that is the theme of this whole video and honestly my life um, even in the midst of hard times, if you watch my previous video, you'll know what I was, what I'm referring to. Even in the midst of difficult, difficult times, your dreams could still come true. And I'm seeing this um, even in the quiet moments, even in the moments where life feels so blah, even in the moments where you're just super discouraged, you know, there's always something next. There's always something to hold on to. And yeah, I was seeing that. I received the edit test and I filled it out you guys and one of the things that I wrote about was the wave trend and <laughs> you guys I submitted my uh, my edit test and once I submitted I think it was even before I submitted I bought my first day of work outfit they didn't even tell me that I had the job but I was so confident that it was mine and a couple weeks later 
I found out that it was officially. <laughs> I'm just so grateful, especially because it came at a time where I was finishing up the third book. Like, it, it even matched up. Like, I had three weeks until I started Cosmo, and I also had three weeks to finish my third book. Like, it's so crazy how being aligned in the will of God is just something so, like, mind-blowing. Truly, truly it is. So if you go on my social media, you'll see um, you'll see my first day of work outfit. It was actually picture day as well, so that was funny. Um, you'll also see my family's reaction. Um, oh, I put it on TikTok too, but I'm not on TikTok like that. But go follow me there anyway. Like, I'm gonna learn, okay? And I'm gonna start showing up there. I'm gonna start posting, I promise. And then, what else? Oh, I also shared, like, an office store on my Instagram too, so... Maybe I'll put it here in this video, maybe not. This video is pretty long anyway, but we'll see. Anyway, I just hope this testimony reminds you to trust what you sense, what you feel is real. I'm not saying it is the truth because there's layers to this truly, um, but I am saying that oftentimes we are led in a certain direction because that is for us. And like I knew, that job was for me there is something that you will see and you will know that it is yours it will have your name on it all over it as well <laughs> it's been so awesome being at cosmo so far you guys um so many blessings like there's a flex policy so basically like i could work from home so here i'm still taking care of my mom and i could go into the city like basically like when i want i've been spending like the the past two months here at home just chilling um we're launching this cool new franchise called cosmo trips and i was one of the first editors to go out on one and so i went out to west hollywood and had the vip treatment and i was able to take my brother as well and so it was so awesome and such an honor to treat him in that way he's amazing and um yeah i'm traveling next weekend i'm going to see lucia and you guys i'm just I'm happy to be back in this space and when I shared it online and my day once, for those of you guys who have been riding with me from 2013, 2015, whatever it was, the early days, um, you saw me in my fashion element, you know? Um, and so a lot of you guys came after the book and stuff so you guys never really got to see me except for like how I dressed and stuff um, but it really just feels so so good to be back I feel I'm feeling like myself again and it is such a beautiful beautiful place I am honored I am grateful I am elated and I am just happy that I am in the right place I don't feel overwhelmed at all. My team is amazing. Like the Cosmo team is so, so nice. And one of the main things that I've said um, was that if I'm to come back into this space, I want to be in a place where I feel like I can be myself. And I am, I feel like I could really be myself here. Well, there, cause I'm not there right now. Um, and it's so funny because um, like during my first few weeks when I was there um, and I got the job and I met with a couple of people and they would just be like, what are you even doing here? You're doing it backwards. Like typically when you're an editor, you're doing it so that you could become the author, but you're already an author and now you're like here to be an editor. And I'm just like, it's because I feel like I never had the chance. I never had my opportunity to fulfill that childhood dream of mine of being a fashion editor. So it just feels so fulfilling that I am here and that I can do it and I am here and i'm here to flourish i'm so excited for what's to come there have been so many projects that i've been working on here and they've been birthing new ideas in me and you guys i can't wait till these things are unearthed to the public but i would just say that i mean you guys can see it i'm happy <laughs> and i'm honored i'm so there's so many even little blessings in the everyday um going out to lunch with my sister and having like being in the same office we work in the same building like that is unheard of you know and it's so beautiful to see us working together um even though we're in different publications and verticals you know but we're still graced 
for these spaces as well and so yeah I think that's it I hope that is it I did not know it would be like this but clearly I had a lot to say to you guys and I am so grateful for you guys for being here since the beginning um, whether you're new or not thank you Thank you for supporting, thank you for loving on me, and a thank you for following along. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! I love ya!